So last year, I was lucky enough to have the number one video for growing tomatoes on YouTube. Unbelievable. In fact, there's a good chance that's how you and I met. If it is, leave me a comment below and let me know that, or at least give me a thumbs up. But what I have loved since that video came out last June, I believe, is I've gotten so many comments from around the world about how you've put my um, tips and tricks into practice and had great results. And if you have, awesome. If maybe you haven't been at a time of year where it's growing time yet, because I know a lot of you are watching in the winter, preparing for the upcoming season, good luck. I think that if you follow the instructions, you're gonna do great. You know, in fact, for me, 2019 was a great tomato season. We had over 500 tomatoes that were produced. We lost count after 500, but 500 tomatoes at least in a four foot by nine foot growing space. That's a ton of tomatoes and not just, you know, not cherry tomatoes. These were big, juicy uh, heirloom and paste tomatoes. But did you know the success of your tomato harvest traces all the way back to when you plant the seeds? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a crucial way to make sure that you have your seedlings off to the best start possible. Now this method works for determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. Now, if you don't know the difference, let me just take 30 seconds and let you know what they are. A determinate plant is a plant that grows to a specific size, usually around four feet, and produces all of its tomatoes within pretty much the same few weeks of time. Uh, the harvest is made and then the plant is done. An indeterminate tomato is probably the ones you're most used to growing, the ones that kind of scramble all over the place. Um, those can grow up to 10 feet and even, they just actually, they keep growing. So really the, the height of the plant depends on your structure and your length of growing uh, season. But they will continue to produce fruits all the way up until the plant is killed with a frost. And sometimes I was actually getting fruit still in November this past, uh, just a few months ago, a couple months ago. So that's the difference between determinate and indeterminate. And this uh, method will work for either one of those. Now to understand why this method of planting your tomato seeds works and is so important, you have to know that tomatoes are one of the very few uh, plants that you'll grow in your garden that actually um, root themselves wherever their stem touches the ground. So to take advantage of that fact right off the bat, we are going to plant in red solo cups. And they can be the brand name, it doesn't matter. They can be any color you want. But these cups give us a really good size to start them early indoors. And right now, probably no matter where you live and what your climate is, now is a perfect time, whether you have a long winter or a short winter, uh, if you have a long winter, there's plenty of room in these cups for them to grow until you're past your uh, last frost date and can plant them outside. Now, the one thing that the Red Solo cups do not have is drainage. It would make for a pretty messy party. Um, so what I used to do was to use a, um, a hot nail. I heated a nail over a candle and then the nail would just be pushed right through and you'd get your drainage which is fine if you have a few, but I'm gonna have a lot. And so to do that would take a long time. So I actually got a comment from a viewer, Arctic Day, who had a different method that he wanted to share with all of us. And that would be a drill. <clears throat> you can do multiple cups at once. So I'm gonna give it a try. I'm hoping this works. All the way through <laughs> all the way through on all of these thank you arctic day that is a tremendous time saver so i'm going to go ahead and put uh this is i don't know an eighth of an inch bit i'm going to put three oh, i love that three holes in the bottom 
So what we're gonna do now is take some seed starting compost and you can buy pre-bagged seed starting compost at any home improvement store usually. Um, it's not always organic what I found. I looked actually a, a few weeks ago at Home Depot, they did not have any organic. But I make my own anyway. Um, I use two parts peat moss, uh, sustainable peat moss or cocoa core, and uh, one part of perlite. And the peat moss or the cocoa core is very moisture retentive and the perlite makes the makes the uh, the mix very aerated very light and fluffy and improves the drainage so we're just going to fill each cup um, only half full you can tamp it down just a little bit but you want to make sure it's not too packed in there and only half full now it is crucial that you only fill the cup halfway and we're going to put two or three seeds in the cup because we want some insurance that we're at least going to get one viable uh, germination, which you should get three. But if not, at least you have one. And if you've got the time to tease out the roots of the other two, if all three come up, then you've got three plants and just put it into another cup. So I'm going to put the three seeds right there in the middle. And then just take a tiny bit. I'm gonna cover them maybe a quarter of an inch. And uh, you want pre-moistened, pre-moistened um, pot potting mix to use. So then you don't have to wash the seeds away. Or what you can do is set them in a tray of water and let the, the, the soil soak up the water through the drainage holes. Either way, you gotta water them. Now I'm planting my favorite tomato of all time, which is Kellogg's breakfast. Now, if you're starting indoors, you're going to need a grow light. A sunny window is not enough. They will stretch and, and use all their energy in a super long, thin stem, and they're not going to be off to a good start. So you need a grow light, but that doesn't have to be intimidating. If you have not watched our uh, seed starting indoors with grow lights video, I'm gonna link it up here and down below. Go ahead and make sure you watch that and you'll find a very inexpensive, easy setup for a grow light. And the grow light needs to be right above these cups. So that would leave about two to three inches of space between the bulb and the leaves once the plant uh, is, is up. Now, if you have a seedling heat mat you're gonna get faster and more even germination. It's not a requirement. They will grow just fine without it, but um, it's really inexpensive and they're good to have. I'll put a link down below for that uh, if you wanna get one. And that can come in handy for other uh, heat loving seedlings like peppers and eggplant and watermelon. Okay, now the big question, why do we fill the cup halfway? Well, we go back now to the way that tomatoes grow and every spot that the tomato stem touches the soil, it's gonna put out roots. So when your seedling comes up, you're gonna have the standard amount of roots that are gonna grow from that halfway point down. But as the seedling grows, so maybe every week, every two weeks, as the, the leaves get a little further away from the soil and we have the stem there that's getting longer, we're gonna put in more uh, seed starting mix and so as the plant grows so does the level of the soil right along with it till it gets just about to the top and that way you're going to have super strong roots growing from the stem all throughout this cup and not just a bunch at the bottom that are going to go straight down and become entangled and swirling around the bottom that is going to stunt the plant's growth now once your seedling has its first true pair of leaves the first leaves that come up are its seed leaves. Those don't count. Once another set of leaves appears that look more like tomato leaves, then you can start to fertilize. And you wanna use an organic liquid fertilizer half strength, maybe every two weeks. I happen to use um, Neptune's Harvest fish and kelp fertilizer. It's great stuff, um, not sponsored by them although I should work on that. Um, 
but I'll link it down below in case you want to try it out. I use that all year in the garden, but half strength for the seedlings once they have their first set of true leaves. Now, once these are ready to be planted out a couple of months from now, um, or maybe six weeks, I'm going to be doing another video that is going to rival the one that was so popular last year. See that video, um, it was, there was a lot of information, uh, but obviously not enough because there were a lot of questions after that video. I did a follow-up video where there were still more questions and I'm still getting questions to this day that I'm having to cover in comments. So I'm going to do an entirely new video with all of that other information and a lot of new information as well. So make sure you are subscribed, hit the bell icon so you can get notified when that video comes out and all the other ones that we're doing. And uh, if you could, if you have tried this way before and it worked for you or you have some tips or questions, please leave those down below in the comments. I do try to get back to all the questions um, eventually, some are very soon and some take a little bit of time, but I do try to go back and, um, and answer those questions or get back to all the comments that I get. I appreciate them so much. I will see you guys next time.